Alright, my guys. Today, man, we're gonna be talking about some serious, some serious ish, man. We're gonna be talking about some things that I myself don't even want to deal with and I don't want to think about. Okay? But that's the nature of the world that we live in right now. Is we have to talk about things that we don't necessarily need or want to talk about. That being said, I am Jackie Wolf. I am your lovable, cuddly, pink-haired Neko. Who's having a little bit of problems with his capture device is not working correctly today. But it's all good. Because, baby, I'm back and I love all of you. I mean it. I want to hug everybody. And I want to say thank you for all of the people that supported me while I wasn't feeling really good. Anyways. As I look for something that I don't remember what I'm looking for. Anyways. As I was saying. As your lovable Neko boy girl thing I mean I, I, I am officially the thing we're gonna be talking about the energy crisis of the world today first before present I really don't like how I did that I didn't mean to hit transition oops <laughs> um anyways before we get started into this I, I wanted to press this by saying there is people in England that are Willingly getting themselves sick because they cannot afford to heat their homes. There are people in the United States that can't afford the electricity to turn on the lights daily. So they stumble around in the dark. There are people in places in the United States where, well, they have rolling power outages. I live in one of those zones. It's not fun. Of course, I also haven't had a heater at all for a very long time. It's amazing what blankets can do. Uh, but that being said, that being said, we're facing a global energy crisis on a level that we have never, never seen before. And it is a major, major, major thing. It's a major, terrible thing. And we need to think about what we're doing here. As I fix this, because I would have done that before I switched screens. But you didn't let me do that, did you, OBS? Asshole. <laughs> the nuclear energy crisis is fueling a nuclear energy resurgence. Although, that being said, I've already heard a bunch of people screaming about nuclear energy being bad for the planet. <laughs> By Haley Zermira. Global energy crisis is forcing countries to rethink their stance on nuclear power. I, for one, actually favor nuclear power, but only because I believe that we need power in order to constantly move forward. I also have a problem with the decline in birth rates. Despite the fact that I cannot produce offspring. Well, nuclear power never did die and or never died in some key economies. The West is beginning to ramp up production in a big way. Well, unless you're Germany. The Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act is keeping the mental building for nuclear power in the US. Um I really think that's a badly named app because it really does nothing to help inflation. The United States is dealing with, like, high amounts of inflation month over month, and people don't know how to read the inflation scale, and they go, see, it's only down to 6% inflation this month. And it's like, that's 6% from 30 days ago. Eggs are $10 a fucking half. Is it the dawn of a new nuclear era? Across the world, there are rumblings and a new push. Nuclear energy is, or is nuclear is a solution to decarbonizing global energy production, even from the environmentalist groups. 
representing stark turnaround for many, even the most anti-nuclear countries, such as Germany and Japan. Germany literally had nuclear power, and Japan has nuclear power. They're not anti they're anti-nuclear in the sense of weapons when it comes to Japan. And Germany is anti-nuclear because they're freaking morons. Have been extending the lives of their existing nuclear power plants, playing in the face of previous pledges to phase out the diverse technology or the divisive technology altogether, while nuclear power plants never died in some key economies, such as China and Russia. More influential Leaders in the West are now getting on board, signaling a potential sea change for the nuclear power industry. Okay, so I'm going to point this out. A lot of climate activists, a lot of people that do a lot of this, are funded. They're, they, they have backing. As somebody that used to be an activist myself, I can tell you this. If you're an activist and you're in any kind of major role, you're probably getting paid. Uh, just say it. For decades, nuclear disasters such as Fukushima, which literally could have been prevented, Three My Island, which literally isn't as bad as we make it sound. And Chernobyl, probably the worst nuclear disaster to ever happen, have loomed in large public consequences, and very few people in a nuclear reactor in their backyard or even in their home state. We have three in my home state, and yeah. One of them's actually incredibly old. Nuclear meltdowns are very rare. However, it has been calculated that on the whole, nuclear energy actively saves lives by preventing millions of deaths that could be otherwise attributed to airborne pollution. Absolutely. Plus, nuclear tends to be somewhat cheaper than the alternatives, due to the fact that nuclear creates a shit ton of power. A literal metric shit ton. But even with the relatively low risk of nuclear disaster, there is still a very real issue of nuclear waste, which is extremely costly to maintain and stays hazardous for thousands of years. But with the impending doom posed by the catastrophic climate change and ever-increasing urgency to address it, nuclear power just seems like the lesser of two evils. It's efficient, dependable, and totally emissions-free. It's proven technology with... Infrastructure and supply chains already in place around the world. Okay, so the the fun thing about the uh, nuclear waste thing that a lot of people don't know is that is entirely the United States Navy's fault. The United States Navy, when they were building the first nuclear ships, were presented with two nuclear reactors. One nuclear reactor did not produce waste at all. It had... I think it might have produced waste at a big enough scale, but it really didn't produce a lot of byproduct. We'll call it byproduct because that makes more sense. It did not produce a lot of byproduct, and the byproduct that it did produce could actually be effectively dealt with. The other design for a nuclear reactor create, er, created a lot of byproduct, but it had 10% more power. The Navy picked the one that had 10% more power. There are actually designs for nuclear reactors that are a lot more efficient with waste than the ones that most of these articles are based off of. Because most people, when they think nuclear reactors, still actually think early, or early nuclear reactors of the 1950s and 60s. Rather than modern technology, which, if we switch to a nuclear power... If we switch to where we're using nuclear energy on scale, like we should have been 10 years ago, we would have to update and modernize a lot of nuclear plants. However, the long-term cost savings is where I'm more concerned about. As for Fukushima, Fukushima is a natural disaster that, for whatever reason, we did not have the wherewithal to figure out how to deal with. 
Actually, we did. That was just a lot of misinformation and lies because, well, you don't want to seem like you did the wrong thing. Three Mile Island, within, I think it was 24 hours, the entirety of that nuclear site was ripped apart, and you can actually walk around on Three Mile Island now. Believe it or not, you could walk around on Three Mile Island, I think it was five years after the incident, and even then, it was probably immediately after the incident, because of how well the response, the design of the reactor, and everything was taken care of. Chernobyl, on the other hand, Chernobyl was, uh... Chernobyl is an interesting case in how you do not run a nuclear reactor. <laughs> Chernobyl... How do I put this? Chernobyl is basically putting everything in place that can fail and hoping it does. That was Chernobyl. Because you're talking about a... A second generation reactor that's first generation had a lot of problems. You're talking about using that reactor as a breeder. A team of people that have no idea what they're doing because this is raining in interns. Oh, and did I mention they put gold into the reactor? Yeah. The elephant's foot is made of gold. But yeah, no, it's one of those things like, cool. The United States remains the world's singest, or single biggest producer of nuclear energy, but the industry has been in decline for decades. Against the will of the people, might I add. The country's nuclear fleet is getting concerningly too long in the tooth, and the cost of maintenance of uh, maintaining nuclear waste is weighing heavily on taxpayers. But for the first time in years, the future of nuclear industry seems a bit brighter in the U.S. As the urgency of decarbonization amps up, with the pressure on policymakers and private industry leaders, while public opinion is still divided, it is slowly changing the favor blah blah blah. Basically, the United States is facing a fucking, a fucking crisis because we can't afford to pay for power. Wait, did I just say the quiet part out loud? Yeah, if you look at the U.S. right now, we actually actively don't have any money. And a lot of people go, wait, what do you mean? I mean, if you was to go see what I deal with... with... Look, I'm on a level with you. My average paycheck from my day job is over $1,000 a week. I make over $1,000 a week, which, for where I live, is rolling, right? That, that means I'm making a shit ton of money, right? Except I'm not. I'm taxed at 40% of what I make. And there's going to be so wow, 40% doesn't sound that bad. I'm taxed at 40% of what I make. And then when I go into the grocery store, I'm double taxed on food. Because of the way my state works. Not to mention the fact that a carton of damn eggs is basically 10 fucking dollars. So, when it comes down to it, affording things in the U.S. right now is a little bit hard. The reason that people are going to start pushing for nuclear power is because it's cheap and the politicians don't want to get their heads chopped off. That would be about the only reason that anybody wants to do this stuff. In the United Kingdom, they are increasingly groundswell of uh, support for nuclear energy. Jeez, I wonder why. It's not like in the United Kingdom they have people that are literally making themselves sick because they can't afford to heat their fucking homes. In a place that can fucking snow. Back in the second months of Russia's illegal invasion. I like that. Russians illegal invasion into Ukraine. Illegal invasion into Ukraine. I was not aware that there was a such thing as a legal invasion. I am very confused by this concept when it comes to countries and countries. I was not aware that you could legally invade a country. I mean, I suppose, I suppose that if Canada wanted the United States to violate it, 
legally. But at the same time, that being said, um, I like it when I get my butt legally invaded. That's beside the point. Then Prime Minister Boris Johnson told his constituents that the answer to the waning or winning the nation off Russian energy and points was investing in the case, or the country's own nuclear plants. Johnson's plan was to offer the unexpected lifeline to diversify an industry promising to build 24 gigawatt nuclear re- power capacity over the next three decades, up from the just 5.88 gigawatt at present. The report from the Financial Times, the plan would not only re- or revive UK's dependence on the Relieve the UK's dependence on the... Look, I can't read. It also would revalidize the nation's profile as a global leader of the nuclear industry. Our aim is to lead the world once again into technology our pioneering so that in 2050, a quarter of our power consumption in the Great Billet is from nuclear. Well, I hate to tell you this. Uh, there. I hate to tell you this, Johnson. I hate to tell you this boring John. I mean, Boris Johnson. Um, it is my goal to make the United States have so much power that when some kid turns on a light switch, basically that light gets the entirety of the energy produced by, um, or gets the entirety of the percentage. I want so much energy in the United States that when you go to flip on your fucking LED lights, they're so bright that people scream that they're ailing. I want you getting suntans from walking under incandescent lights. That is how much energy I want in our grid. <laughs> but yeah, no, when it comes down to it, of course, your our Johnson has been sacked. The replacement, I'm not even going to uh, try to pronounce uh, risky sun case name has continued to show enthusiasm for ramping up nuclear power or power production capacity in the United Kingdom. Cool. However, critics uh, won't point out this is the first time that England has tried and failed to kickstart a new golden air. Look, guys, I'm going to be freaking honest with you. We need to be investing in something. As the world is right now, we're in a very bad spot. We're not, none of this is good. I know a lot of you want to think, oh, well, Jackie's just a doomer. He, he doesn't, it, it, she, it doesn't think straight. But at the same time, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to be as fucking honest, as fucking honest as my pink hair will let me be. And that is... Point blank, we need to be doing something about power. We need to be doing a lot of things because right now, the markets are crashing. You look at those market reports, they ain't doing very good. You look around you, everybody's miserable. Everybody's not in a good mood. And I don't even know what you're wanting me to say because this is this is just ugh. but anyways I've been Jackie I love you all thank you for listening to me be boring again because that's what apparently I do but, uh game stream should resume soon hopefully hopefully uh, I will probably have something explaining a little bit about that later on today So, stay tuned for that. Anyways, love you guys. Stay positive. Bye.